We're going to read a few more bold statements from Jesus. <clears throat> if we carry on, uh, if we go to John chapter 6, start reading in verse 48. He says, I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat my flesh... Uh, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. That's a pretty bold statement. <laughs> and he goes on to say, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up in the last day. For my flesh is real, my, food, uh, my, fr my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, uh, live, uh, live because of the Father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate manna and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. Thank you, Jesus. And so it's been a little while since we've done communion, and and uh, I don't. I've shared I've shared a few different things about communion, and and you know the different takes and the different revelations I've had, and. And uh, this this last one actually works really well with the bold statements that you're you're talking about aud 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 audacious is that what it is audacious statements because Jesus makes a statement he says unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood you have no life in you you're dead and that's a really hard pill to swallow because the Jews right then and there begin to argue say how is it possible how can we how can we possibly eat you and and drink your blood and uh, and it's it's, it's something that I guess we have to acknowledge in the church today. Um, what does it mean to eat his flesh? What does it mean to drink his blood? What does it mean to, we call it communion. If you go and read in Luke, I don't know if I'm, I might go read in Luke, but Jesus makes a similar statement. It says, take the body, this is, my, this is my body broken for you. And he says, this is my body and this cup, this is my blood. And so he's making these statements about consuming him. And, and it's, just, it's just something that we need to understand because... As believers, we're people who have, we, we claim to have the life of Jesus in us. We're people that, you know, we say that we have the, we have the life of God, we, we're alive again, we're born again. But Jesus says, nobody, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, he says, you have no life in you at all. And in fact, if you go on to read, there was a huge amount of people that were following them at this point. It was, there was a lot of people and they were arguing with them and bantering back and forth. And so finally, I think he just gave up and had enough and said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And if you keep reading down just a little bit further, it says that they left. They couldn't take it. All of these people decided to leave. And Jesus looks at his disciples and says, um, he says, do you want to leave too? Jesus asked the 12. <laughs> and Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. And there is something really important here because Jesus makes a statement that is so audacious and it is so... Um, it, it, is, it is so bold that it actually caused people to make a decision. It caused people to, to actually do something. And the, the, the thing that I've been pondering and thinking about lately is, is what, what does it mean really to, to, to con, I, you know, you can simplify it, to consume Jesus, to eat his flesh. And drink. What does it mean to do that? And I think, I think the disciples, the 12, perfectly emulated what Jesus was trying to get across here. He says, because he made a statement that was so out of this world that it caused everybody to leave except for the 12. And the 12 made this statement. He says, he says, we can't go because we believe you. We believe you. And I think that's the whole point of the, the communion table and coming together and, and being brothers and sisters and, and partaking of Jesus. Because Jesus, you know, he says, do this in remembrance of me. And, uh, and, and I, believe, I believe the point is, as believers, we come together. Now, now, when we eat this, this doesn't, when we take this, this doesn't give us our eternal life. This is a representation of what gave us our eternal life. Okay? So, as, so, so for, for people, if, if you're in here and you're not a believer of Christ, you've never made a decision to follow Jesus. If I say you know, take this, this is the body of Christ, you know, take this and you'll live. It doesn't, it's not, it's not going to, it's not going to give you eternal life simply because you took a piece of bread or you drank this little cup because this is supposed to be a representation um, of a decision that you've made in your life. 
And it's supposed to, it's supposed to represent what God, uh, a decision that you made to Jesus. Just like the disciples, when, when Jesus stood there and flat out made a statement that nobody else could handle, the disciples said, no, we can't go anywhere because we believe you. And that's what this is supposed to remind us of. Every time we come together, you know, we had a heck of a year in 2013. What a battle. What a struggle. But this is supposed to remind us of the belief that, the belief that we have in Jesus and that we're with him even to the very end. And Jesus says in John, he actually says right after they, they take this, um, they take this, the, he does the first communion, we call it, or whatever, the last supper. Jesus goes into a long speech and he says, you were the ones that stood with me in my trials. And he says, because of that, I confer on you a kingdom. And you go on and you read it. But the point was, was that the, only the people that really, truly believe are the ones that actually stick with Jesus. And these are the ones that communion is for. These are the ones that partaking in the body and the blood of Jesus and, and all the stuff that pastor talked about, those, those audacious statements, they don't mean nothing unless you're connected to Jesus. Unless you've given your heart and life over to Jesus, they're just fun words to say. They're just, they're just neat things that, that you can put up on your, you know, you can walk by, you'll be one of those people, you get in the mirror, you go, I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner, you know, and you go, you're like, I am full of faith, you know, unless you're actually, unless, unless you're a person that says, unless, you know, even if all else fails, Jesus, you're stuck with us now. It's like, it's like the, the commitment that two people make in marriage, till death do us part, except obviously for eternity, but for now on to forever. You're stuck with us now, Jesus. And he makes the same commitment to us. That's the point of this. This isn't, just a, this isn't just a statement that we make to him. This is a statement he has made back to us. This is my body. Take it and live. This is my blood. You are forgiven. And we take it in turn saying, we believe you. We believe everything that you said, and we're going to stick with you right to the bitter end, Jesus. And that's, uh, it's really powerful after this year that we've had that we can come together as a body in strength and say, we believe you, Jesus. We believe all the words that you've said. We believe all the promises you have for this house. We believe all the words that you've prophesied into our lives. We believe you, Jesus, to the bitter end. We're together. And so, uh, yeah, so I, I think this will be fun. Maybe, uh, what songs did you have, worship team? What do you got? Maybe we can do one? But let me just check. God, I look to you. Let's do God, I look to you. Why don't you come on up and get ready, and I'll have my wife come. Because, uh, it, and if you read in, in Luke, and after they do the communion, Jesus said after they did that, then they sang a hymn, and then they went on their way. So <laughs> we don't have a hymn, I don't think. But uh, <laughs> a new hymn, yes, this is a new hymn. But uh, what I want us to do is we'll take just a couple minutes, um, and Jada, maybe, or, yeah, Jada, you're singing it, right? Yes. Jada, maybe just sing uh, just a little bit, and we just, uh, because this is a, this is a moment, and I, 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 I take this with all serious and reverence, like, for me, it's, it's never a joke for me. <laughs> It's never a joke for me to, to, to come to Jesus and reaffirm, I believe in you. Everything that you ever said, I believe it. Everything that's written in that book, I believe it, Jesus. And so I think we just need to just take a few minutes and just reaffirm that in your life. If you're not a believer in Jesus, don't, don't partake. Don't feel, you know, obligated to anything. That's, oh, that's okay. But why not in this time, if, you know, we can remedy that situation fairly easy. It's a decision we make and we go after Jesus and, and he, you, can, you can meet him right here, right today. You're surrounded with the right people. He, he's in this place. Um, uh, and we're going to give a few minutes and then maybe what I'll do is I'll, 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 I'll pray with all of us together. And then what we're going to do is when we actually take communion, Aaron will be on this side and I'll be on this side. We'll each have uh, all that we need and you guys just come up the aisles and then just round back to your seats and then we'll all partake together, okay? So don't, don't, don't get ahead of us. So let's just worship.